Hi guys and welcome my name is Jan Nell and today we are going to learn how to use PHP with my SQL databases. Connecting to a database involves five main steps and we should keep this in mind every time we interact with a database. There are five steps. The first step is where we are going to create a connection to the database. The second step we have to select the database that we want to use. The third step is where we are going to perform our database queries or our MySQL statements. Fourth, we will use that return data, uh, if there was any, to do with it what we want to do. For example, we, we might have returned a list of users and we want to display each user's name and surname in a, in an ordered list or anything like that is, is, is where, that's where we do it in step four. The fifth step will be where we close the connection that we created in the first step. We're always going to use these five steps when interacting with the database, but if we created the connection and selected the database, in other words, if we completed steps one and two, then we can perform steps three and four multiple times and continue performing queries on that database before we finally close the connection in step five at the end. So we are now going to look at these five steps, break it down and walk through each of them to see how we perform them using PHP. Before we start though, we need to create a database so that we can have a database to connect to. I've got a copy of, of WAMP server installed on my machine. Uh, I suggest you guys, um, you know, figure out how to do this if you don't know how to. Uh, there is a lot of tutorials out there to get WAM server installed on your machine. In any case, underneath tools there is PHP My Admin, which is basically a user interface to manage your MySQL databases. I'm going to create a, a new database for this tutorial and I'm going to call it Tutorial. Okay. I'm just going to click on create and PHP My Admin has created the database tutorial but if you click on it here on the left hand side you will find that the database is empty and there's no tables in it and we are going to create our first table uh, by clicking here on create table our table name is going to be users it's a users table and we're going to fill in a couple of these columns here first one we will call it id it will be a type int length values 11 for good practice we will make it the primary key and tick auto increment or a underscore i second row will be name this will be var car let's make it 255 then surname again var car 255 and then for good measure we will throw in a email as well Type var car 255. Nothing special here. We just created the columns that uh, is required for the table. We're going to click on save and PHP my admin comes back with a message saying table has been created. And surely enough, there is the table. Now we want to uh, go into this table and then we're going to add a couple of users to this table. By clicking on insert, PHP My Admin allows us to add values to to these rows. So um, we're going to leave ID uh, blank, and we're going to start with name. Just going to fill in my name, my surname, and my email address, and even though this will be uh, one insertion, I'm going to add another one as well and just call that Andrew Smith Smith and Andrew at smith.com and we're going to click on go and two rows was inserted uh, so if we go into the users table we will see those two rows there, Jan and Andrew. Now these are just values that we are going to use in the tutorial to work with. You might have different ideas in your mind. 
but we have a table and there's something in that table so what we're going to do next is we're going to switch over to our editors to start doing the PHP code first of all I have a file I've created a file called database.php there is no PHP in it yet it is just basic HTML with a head a title and a body with an h1 tag that uh, shows us this little message here I have saved this file inside my hard disk WAMP www and database that is where I saved it there it is database.php so if you don't mind creating this file and saving it in your WAMP directory uh, and directing your browser towards localhost slash database slash database dot php and you will see this file appearing in front of you so we can start doing the code first of all we are going to start by adding some php tags uh, at the top of our page and I'm just going to copy in some code to get us started off with so as you might remember we have five steps and step one is to create the database connection and this is where we declare a variable called connection that will be our handle that we use to refer to this connection so a variable called connection is equals to the mysql connect function that is a function that basically takes your server name username and password and then creates a connection it creates that handshake between PHP and your database so the data the, the database uh, the server name is is localhost my your username will surely differ from mine but usually it is root and then your password should be a password that you selected during the creation and or installation of your server now I have no password so I'm just gonna leave that blank and have nothing between those uh, two quote marks there so this creates the connection that's the single line that creates the connection between PHP and MySQL what I do next is I have an if statement here that basically checks to see if the connection was successful so if the connection was not successful then die with this message and the MySQL error so let's save this and give it a go if we refresh the page there is no errors which means that the connection was successful if we want to test it we can add a password here that we know won't work wrong password save it go back and click on refresh and surely enough it comes back with an error saying that the database connection failed access denied for that user okay so we know it works our our connection was successful okay so step two said that we should select the database and this is how we're going to do that selecting your database to use uh, we clear cre declare another variable here called db underscore select we set it equals to mysql select db which is a function a mysql function that goes and it 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 looks for the database that you specify we have a database called tutorial and we pass that name of the database into the first parameter of this function and then separated by a comma we, we pass in the handle connection so that uh, my, the MySQL select database knows which connection to use so that connection is passed into this function and th then we have basically selected the, the database what we do next is we check to see if the selection was successful or not so if the DB select was unsuccessful in other words was not selected this function returns a boolean true or false 
So, and that exclamation basically checks to see whether it was true or false. So, if the DB select is false, then die with the message the database selection failed and append the MySQL error to that. So, let's go back and refresh our page. And surely enough, we have no error, so the selection was successful. Okay, so that is step one and two. Fairly easy, nothing special or very complex. Step number three, however, uh, is a bit more daunting in the fact that we have to execute a MySQL statement, and this is how it looks. So in the body tag, I'm going to paste the following set of code, and uh, we are going to go through that in a second. Okay, so step three, we're going to perform the database query. We have a variable here called result and it's equals to the function MySQL query, which is a MySQL function. And into that function you pass in your MySQL query or statement. In the first parameter, I'm just saying uh, select all from users. And that is as simple as it is. I'm telling the database, listen, I want you to, re to, to select everything from the table users. And I want you to use this connection, that handle that we created in line 6 in step 1. And then if there is no result, die with the message the database query failed with, an unders with a MySQL error appended to that. So if we save that and we refresh our page again, surely enough we don't have any errors. But if we made a mistake, for example, just saying user instead of users, we save that and we return, then the database query failed because the table user did not exist. So we're just going to put that back. We know that works. Everything is fine. So these statements, there's a lot of MySQL statements, you can research them and find out what everything, what, what types of things you can do with them and uh, figure out with themselves. I'm just going to go on to step number four. So I'm just going to create some space for us to work here and then I'm going to paste in step four. Use the returned data. So I'm using a while loop to loop through the rows that we've created. And the while loop basically says we have a variable user that's equals to MySQL fetch array, which is my, another MySQL function that takes the query and it fetches it in an array. And it stores the array inside the variable user. So I suggest that you look into these MySQL functions to, to learn exactly what they do and what types of data they return. But if, if we return data from a query such as this one above here, then we do a MySQL fetch array on the result that was returned by that function. So, and store it inside a variable. So this variable is now equals to an array of results that is users or rows. In other words, if we echo the user name, and the surname and we have concatenated the br tag there then we should have the results returned from the mysql database and if we return our page here and surely enough there is the name and the surname of each of the two values or rows that we returned from the database so we have now completed steps 1, 2, and 3. The final step will be to close the database. And we can do it here after the closing HTML tag. We just paste in step 5, closing the database connection. It runs a function MySQL close and it passes in the handle that we created in step 1. And it says to MySQL, let's close that connection. And that is all that is to these five steps. You have selected, you have create, connected, selected, you ran your query, you used the results that were returned, and you closed the connection. 
but as I said earlier steps once you can you create the connection and select the database you can you can repeat steps three and four to work with the database so I'm going to paste in another example so I'm just pasting in this uh, HR here to separate our code but uh, let's go ahead and repeat steps two and three so step three I'm just going to put there repeat okay so we have again a result that is equals to MySQL query and the query is the same as in the previous step three select all from users but instead of having it stop there I'm going to add one more uh, one more line to the statement and going to say select all from users where ID equals two so just to be clear I want to ask PHP to use MySQL to come to the users table and select every user in this table that's ID is equals to two okay so that's what that statement says and then obviously use the connection that we created in step one to do so if there is no result then die with that message so let's go on and use the data okay so the data that we're going to use is uh, again a while loop while the variable user is equals to that mysql fetch array function for the result we are going to echo the user's name and for good measure the email so we're going to save that return to our browser and then return sure enough the hr comes through here and repeat step two and three andrew is the name and andrew at smith.com is the email so i might have wanted to add a br tag here at the end just to make it nice and 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 tidy and on a new line Andrew Andrew at smith.com so that's it we have su successfully created the database connection we selected the database we ran step 3 performing the database query step 4 using the data we repeated them and we close the connection so guys this is a very basic uh, tutorial that basically comes in and shows you how to connect to the database select the database use a query to return data from the database and then use that data in whichever way you want I hope this tutorial helped you in some way if you would like uh, to have more tutorials please uh, subscribe to our channel uh, follow us on on Facebook and Twitter we would really much appreciate some thumbs up and thank you very much for listening to the tutorial I have a fantastic day this is Jan Nell saying goodbye